going to do Shall we crack on with the next fabulous break club act? Yeah. You in the back, I'm trying hard enough to listen again. Shall we go to the next fabulous break club act? Yeah. Let's go and have a little look at the crowd. Yeah. I have a job that most horny teenagers would envy. I sit in a room all day on my computer watching videos of wild animal sex. <laughs> if career advisors went into secondary schools and said, did you know that you can get university funding for watching sex tapes? The world would have thousands of bonobo researchers. <laughs> That's right, I study bonobos. They're apes closely related to chimpanzees. Sort of like the weird cousin. Bonobos are famed for their sexual behavior. Although the range of positions is often exaggerated, we hear about bonobos' bizarre sex positions as if they'd read the Kama Sutra, but they really only use two, ventroventral and dorsoventral. In scientific terms, missionary and doggy style. <laughs> no, it's the female-female sexual behavior that makes bonobos really interesting. It's like their way of making friends. So when bonobo and chimpanzee females reach adolescence, they immigrate to a new community. UKIP would not get many bonobo votes. <laughs> when chimpanzee females reach their new community, they don't really make any new friends and are therefore dominated by these tight-knit groups of males who've been bros their whole lives. But bonobo females overcome this. Uh, they are more socially cohesive, they make BFFs, they avoid stressful feeding. And it's probably because they GG rub. <laughs> now, in the field, when I first heard this cold GG rubbing, the field assistant next to me said, Regarde, les bonobos, GG. And I thought, ah, it's French. <laughs> oui, les bonobos, GG. Very progressive, very continental. Aha, uh -huh, les bonobos font GG only to find that it was an abbreviation for the rather clinical term genitogenital rubbing. <laughs> I see you back there. <laughs> um, so bonobo females, like chimp females, as Lewis said earlier, um, have these genital swellings. For bonobos, these last for the whole month of their cycle, um, and they range from the size of a tangerine to a prize-winning pumpkin. And to Gigi rub, they embrace, wrap their legs around each other, and wiggle back and forth, rubbing their genitals together. And it looks so much like two balloons rubbing together that you half expect their hair to stand up from the static. <laughs> I've expanded your socio-sexual horizons, and I didn't even buy you a drink first. <laughs> now, I don't study bonobo sexual behavior. That research topic was taken. No, I study gestural communication. How do they use movements of their hands, of their legs, of their head, of their body uh, to communicate with one another? They gesture when they're playing, when they're feeding, when they're grooming, telling others to piss off. Okay, maybe not that one. And since they have a lot of sex, they also spend a lot of time communicating about it. One of the chapters of my PhD is going to be a version of the game a pickup artist book of guidelines for bonobos, only less sleazy and misogynistic. <laughs> so to put this into context, humans also use uh, humans use gestures for to pick up and hit on other humans. Um, we might use gestures like, or, <laughs> or. <laughs> well, we might. <laughs> this is where it becomes apparent that I don't get hit on in bars very often. <laughs> Uh, we also use series of gestures. <laughs> or my favorite, Wayne's World. <laughs> so bonobos also use gestures for such ends. They use gestures to solicit sex from other bonobos. Uh, they use them singly and they use them in series. Their gestures look a little different. So they have an arm raised gesture, a rocking back and forth. <laughs> and a full present, and for males this is usually accompanied by a magnificent erection, <laughs> just to get the point across. <laughs> it seems for males that they gesture slightly differently depending on their strength and their age and their rank. 
So whereas a higher ranking strong male might be able to just arch his back slightly, a adolescent who is just sort of finding his way in the community, uh, in the ranks, will be shaking branches and rocking back and forth wildly. And you can think of this as the difference between James Dean looking across the room and giving a subtle wink, and a teenage boy outside your bedroom window with a boombox over his head <laughs> wailing. <laughs> So I'm going to be analyzing these gestures um, and gesture meanings by age and sex and rank. And it seems that bonobo females are using the same solicitation gestures as the males for copulation and also for Gigi rubbing. And maybe at this point you're becoming a little desensitized to all of the sex talk. I've reached a point where I don't realize that others may not be as nonchalant about bonobo sex as I am. In an academic presentation I gave a couple of months ago, uh, I showed this video clip three times. It was a beautiful, beautiful illustration of, uh, of this series of gestures. One female approaches the other, knocks her on the back, swings her arm in front, stands up for a full present. The other female turns and flicks her wrist. And the first female lies on her back and presents again. And so I show this on repeat, really excited about the gesture. You can imagine what happens next, of course. And afterwards, people came up to me and said, yeah, great presentation. But did you have to show them genital rubbing on repeat? <laughs> it just shows academics more concerned with sex than communication. <laughs> so where this leaves me, a lot of awkward moments in my office. Someone walks in, I'm sitting there on my computer looking sheepish, fur and genitals bouncing all over the place on the screen in front of me. And then I hide that window, clear my browser history, and go back to coding Bonobo video. <laughs> and